Hi, I'm Natalie Applewhite, the Associate Director at the Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting. At the Center, we always encourage our applicants and grantees to use video as part of their reporting project to reach both the widest possible audience and have greater impact. I think the first step is to think really carefully about how you can tell your story through visual elements. Sometimes it's really helpful to try and imagine the piece without words of any kind. How would you get your point across then? Of course, not all stories lend themselves to being told through video. Stories that are strictly about statistics or numbers or very abstract theories may not lend themselves to a visual interpretation. But there's usually a way to work in a human angle to add relevance to the story. And for that, video is a really great tool. If the whole story is going to be told in a video format, then there are some key things to keep in mind to make a really good piece of video journalism. The first is that you need to make a clear outline of what it is you want to communicate to your audience. Then you really have to think about what kind of background information do people need to understand the context and what's the best way to present that. Then you need to think about your characters. A good piece of journalism almost always has a strong character to lead us through the story and help us make connections to the issues. And you need to think about what information should come from an expert versus an outside observer or a person directly affected by the issue. If someone is presenting statistics about a subject, it should be clear that they are in a position to know. The victim who is upset about how she's been treated may not provide a good source of statistical information, but she can speak to the personal impact the situation has had on her life. Every person has expertise of some kind. Just make sure you assign the right character to each angle of the story. Throughout the process, you need to really think about what visuals you need to use to illustrate your story. And you need to keep that in mind while you're conducting the interview. If someone is describing how the youth in Kashmir are frustrated and growing impatient, you'll want to find images that support that statement. So don't just feature somebody talking about how polluted the water is. Show us. Let people see for themselves as much as possible. You also want to make sure you avoid the talking head syndrome. People get really tired of staring at the same shot of the same person for long periods of time. So you want to make sure you have lots of b-roll or visuals to accompany what the person is saying. You can even use b-roll of the speaker while they are talking to give us more context about who they are. In news stories especially, you often do need an expert point of view. But the expert need not be stuck behind a desk. If it's a doctor talking about the conditions in a prison in Haiti, mic him and walk through the prison with him as he's describing the situation. The key is to use video to provide as much extra context as you can during the interview. So the choice of location is always a very important decision. How does the space help us understand the story? And you want to make sure you capture both the small details as well as the larger context. For a story about a group of islanders displaced by climate change, we should see the island from a distance to get a sense of place, and we should see the people up close. People sometimes talk about images as evidence. And while images can also be lies when taken out of context, they can go a long way to making a case about the story that you're telling. So the golden rule in video journalism is that you never have enough B-roll.